canoes and capybaras, there's more than one way to stalk Argentinian Axis deer. Crow's treasure trove, and he's got a new rifle, new shotgun stock, new aim point with his name on it, and new Laporte trap. Plus, he's got pigeons too. In news, we can exclusively reveal what the Scottish Government has planned for sporting estates like the one behind me. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We're rejoining Tim on his Argentinian adventure. This time he's after Axis deer. Just like the European boar, this attractive deer, which is native to India and Sri Lanka, was introduced to Argentina more than a hundred years ago for hunting. It's now successfully established itself across the country. Unlike the smaller native deer, it's open season on these fallow-like alien invaders. Here in the northwestern corner of Argentina, thick scrub is an ideal habitat for them to seek sanctuary, while making them tough to stalk, but the farmers want them thinned out. They compete with the cattle for grazing, they carry disease, and are even known to fight and injure livestock. Because of heavy rains making roads impassable, we are offered the chance of accessing the lower part of the enormous farm from the river. Tim isn't going to turn that down. So I think the plan is actually we can go on the canoes, two of us, well the four of us actually, we've got two guides, and uh, we can go down the river and hopefully we'll see some deer or some boar, and if there's an opportunity to actually shoot one from the canoe, it's going to be really, really good, but <laughs> it's slightly, uh, well it's a bit of a challenge I suppose, that's if nothing else, but this is what uh, we actually signed up for in some ways, you know, um, Carl said look, come out, this is what I can do, and then he mentioned canoes, and we're like, really? And we thought, well, why not? So that's what we're doing. So we're just kind of, in some ways, living the dream and uh, just trying everything we can possibly do with hunting. The river is fast, and if a shot presents itself, Tim is going to have to do a driven style shot. But he'll be the one moving. How does that work? Capybara are on the quarry list at the moment, but Tim doesn't fancy it. These giant guinea pigs may taste good, but we have beef, and in Argentina that is all you need. So this is more like European stalking, yeah? Yeah, where it's, it's a lot closer, there's a lot of lot of field craft. Yeah. Waiting, spotting, moving, spotting, yeah? Yes, yeah. so we'll, but we will move really, really uh, so, slow. So what we're hoping to do is we sh show you guys how to do, how to do it properly. I have, yeah, I have no problem. I can show you the way you can do yeah? the stocking. Yeah. No, no, no problem whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. There are deer tracks, but it's likely they are winding us as we go. It's far too close to the trees. It's just we need to get out of it, but. Uh, our uh, farmer, who's getting us towards his land, unfortunately decided to, uh, thought he can jump over the little ditch. He didn't, so he's now got a very, very wet foot. He's not at all happy. And we've got about two or three kilometer, kilometer walk back. So we, we all kind of had a bit of a chuckle, but you can see he's actually not at all happy. So, uh, so instead of having four guys making a noise, we've got this one, two, three, it's quite amusing at the moment, so I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, well, we can crack on. We need to get in some open space because it's too close. There's no way we can find a deer here, so let's crack on. Oh dear, 
that's not a good look. Eventually, the decision is to head to the farm and have a think. It's wonderfully rustic, and the Argentinian hospitality is something special. Wow, are we tasting Argentina? It's so, so rural, it's as it is, there's no airs and graces, and we're absolutely loving it. There's something exciting about walking through grass that's head height. We've enlisted the help of a local guide and he is taking us back towards the river, but with the wind in our favour. We've had about we've had about three quarters an hour walk and you're just ploughing through it and our, our guide here. You can see his boots are not quite as waterproof as, as mine. It's quite exciting ploughing through that grass actually, isn't it? Just, you've got no idea where you're going. And he's up here somewhere, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Then he changes direction, then the other direction. He's like, my goodness. Then he, what's interesting is watching the tracks, yeah? So therefore he keeps on, he stops, and he sees where the track's going. And he, he obviously just knows which way to go. So I was, I was, I was actually watching him, out of the way he's just checking things. Yeah, that's fresh, not fresh. We're gonna go that way, and then suddenly we go this way, so. Anyway, all, all in the hunt, I suppose. A lapse in concentration and we bump some bucks. We get the feeling that this was the banker and we have just committed to stalking this evening too. But who cares, to rebuild our strength is a proper cowboy lunch break. <laughs> Beef and it. revolvers. Cool, that track comes up in the air a bit, mate. Algotin uses this 357 for bore when things get a little too close for comfort. Is that a, a, a common thing, or is it just because this this guy is a really good shot? I don't know many people that does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so obviously you're a very very good sh uh, shooter with, with with revolvers. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like the revolver. You do a lot of practicing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the last two outings, we have walked miles. Carlos recommended we bring wellies for this trip, but we didn't expect to be walking 15 kilometres a day. Thankfully, the Harkila rubber has stood up well. Wellington boots. I get so frustrated with Wellington boots. It's such a simple thing, you think, but Wellington boots are drive me mad. Over the years, I've had so many leading brands of Wellington boots, and I've been so disappointed with most of them. They just do not last. So it'd be really interesting to see if these Harkeela boots outperform the rest of those leading brands. Right, this is drinking at the Last Chance Saloon. We're back on the horses for boar tomorrow, so we want to see some deer. This one is a no-go, and the thick scrub and spooky cattle are making things hard. Well, we've been out for about an hour now, it's still quite warm. Found a couple of local native deer, which at you, I think they're called. But uh, they're protected, so we can't shoot those. We've actually bumped um, two axis deer. One's quite a large one just now. Our guide's actually on a couple of tracks on some fairly big ones. So it's more like tracking as opposed to stalking. Our guide suggests we sit and let things settle near a known crossing point. We are caught out a bit and within a couple of minutes this youngster appears. Tim has to steady the stare on his knees as his sticks are on the deck. The youngster drops to the 150 grain 306. And this is what local knowledge is all about. Our guide knew this is a passing point, a transit area for the deer from this property to this one. And as we just sat down, within five minutes, a very, very young one just came across. To know my stick's the right place, about 80 metres away, so a reasonable shot. But uh, there's a few more in there. Really? So we just need to pick the, the small one up and get it up here because they're actually in there. We can hear them making a noise. So uh, let's hope some more come back through. Well, this is my first access deer. Beautiful animal, the colouring is just uh, amazing. But they are a problem, aren't they, Carlos? In, in not, not just because they're a pest. What else? What, what are the problems with access deer in, in Argentina? Uh, they compete 
with the grazing with the, the cattle. Mm -hmm. um, another big, big issue is that they carry ticks. Okay, so let's talk about these, 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 these kind of ticks. What disease do they pass on to the, to the livestock? They, they call it sadness disease. Really? Yeah, okay. at the beginning, the, the, the way uh, how they spot this, the, 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 the cow start looking really, really sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later on, uh, the cow have some motricity problems. Yeah. You can see that they get, they get weak and they get very poorly. And finally, they get high fever and they die. And, and there is also another issue as well. Yeah. Some of the, some of the farmers they they found on the back of the cattle holes. So apparently, uh, they've been fighting with the with the deer. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, it's taken. I don't know how many kilometres we walked today. 30 kilometres. 30. Yeah. 30, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've, it's been a long day, yeah. About 30 kilometres. Yeah, it's been quite warm. This has been a well-earned beast for us, but it's been quite an adventure. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, crack on and see if we can get any more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, well done. We get the chance of seeing a gralic and for the first time witness it being done skillfully with a machete. Hey Childerly, this is how you do a suspended gralic, Argentinian style. You don't need your ember leaf, you need one of these. With enough light for a few more hours, the neatly packed Axis venison is hung out of the way and we continue our stalk. the scrub he spots a mature doe. Really interesting hunt. Just walking through the back here, and we heard these deer calling. So he just said to us, Right, okay, get all your rucksacks off, we're going to go native. I went, really? <laughs> but he said, Take everything off you possibly can and just go really, really slowly because he knew they're in here. I couldn't see them, so about 50 yards, and he just kept looking. There's one over there, one over there, and I thought, I can't see it. Got my binoculars out, oh my god, and it's just straight through the bushes, about 80, 90 yards away wasn't too sure about the shop because there's so much undergrowth in the way but I was managed to kind of managed to kind of find an area I thought well that looks safe to me and and we just taken it right on the side there and, it, and immediately I saw it just dart off to the right hand side I thought oh gosh here we go we've been all around here trying to find it and it's just down here so it's a but anyway that's quite an interesting stalk there because they are so so um, aware of you and obviously they knew something was around but they didn't actually do anything but there's quite a few here wasn't there yeah, quite a, about 10 of them, I suppose. So it's, it's really good. Anyway, well done, Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, you come up with the goods. Yeah, yeah. We found the bullets just underneath the skin. 150 grain Remington is a mixture of penetration and also fragmentation. So it's, it's designed to kind of go in quite deep and then fragment and uh, purposely for wild boar and for the bigger deer. So I think this has been an excellent um, bullet choice. And what's interesting is that uh, it's actually retained most of its, its weight. It's, it's expanded beautifully, but I would say that I was, from looking at that, it's probably retained probably about 75% of its, its weight. So it's mushroomed out, it's expanded, and, 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 and put the hydrostatic shot through the body. And, and that's what they're designed to do. So after two days and 30 k's, we have two Axis deer. It would have been nice to have seen some big bucks, but we have meat. Just hope it's as good as the beef. 
Thank you, Tim and Carlos. Well done. After Tim's last outing on Field Sports Britain looking for wild boar on horseback in Argentina, we offered a fabulous Harkila rucksack as a competition prize. Well, in my slightly techie way, I've put all your names onto a spreadsheet on my phone. There it is. I'm going to scroll up and down and up and down and up and down like that. And I'm going to choose a winner completely at random like this. And the winner is... It's 1001 Space, who says, Hakila Rucksack, great vid, and he entered on YouTube along with more than 300 of you. Thank you. Well done, 1001 Space, a Hakila Rucksack on its way to you. And there's a chance to win another one. It's our competition for a second Hakila Rucksack. Make sure you get your entries in by about the middle of October 2017 and we'll draw the winners in the usual way. Please put David Loves Riding Bareback in the description below. No, only kidding. Please put Harkila Rucksack 2 in the description below and in the description below this film's Facebook page. And you will be in the running. Now we have our own gorgeous gaucho on the Field Sports Channel news stump. It's David. This is Field Sports Channel News. There are fears that the price of shooting in Scotland could double. Nicola Sturgeon's government is to hit Scottish estates with new sporting rates, threatening businesses and wildlife management. In a leaked memo, we can reveal that rates will be charged at between 40p and £1 per acre of sporting land. The maths is, of course, a bit more complicated than this, but we feel it offers a useful baseline. Some 16,000 estates are to be hit with bills, sent out on the 1st of October 2017, backdated to April 2017. Many are worried the rates will put the price of Scottish sport out of reach for many, destroying livelihoods, communities and the goodwill of landowners. When I first came to this estate, it employed four people. Now it employs over 50. And, and this is down to a passion for the community and a philanthropy. It's a definite form of philanthropy by uh, the individual that owns it. And, and I think the future lies in having wise partnership with these people, not inflicting some form of taxation that makes uh, all the development here untenable. We will have a special feature on this story after the bills go out in October. Estates have six months to appeal and the advice is to do just that. If you are affected by the story, please contact us so we can help coordinate a media fight back. In other news, bears are at risk from French farmers. A group of masked farmers issued a video in which they vowed to start hunting bears in France's Pyrenees Mountains following attacks on sheep. Brown bears, a protected species, were blamed for the deaths of about 450 sheep who tumbled over cliffs while being chased by bears in two separate incidents this summer. The threat to hunt them marks an escalation of a bitter dispute between farmers and the French government over the animals which were reintroduced into southwestern France from Slovenia in the 1990s. Wanted. Shooters for Grand Canyon bison. American wildlife officials say bison are causing environmental damage in the Grand Canyon National Park. Now the US National Park Service is seeking volunteers to help cull a herd of bison in the famous gorge, which it says are damaging park resources. About 600 bison live in the area, but rangers say that could hit 1,500 in a decade if the numbers are not reduced to 200. A lottery system will be used to choose the shooters. A National Geographic photographer is writing a story about saltwater crocodile hunting in Australia. There are more than 100,000 salties in Northern Australia. They grow more than 20 feet long and weigh more than 100 pounds. 50 years ago, they were numbered fewer than 1,000. Photographer Trevor Frost went on 11 hunts for a series about a man's relationship with the crocs. Norwegian reindeer hunters have found an 1,100-year-old Viking sword. The hunters in Norway's Oppland County found the sword. It's thought to be from the year 900 and was found three hours from the nearest road. The sword owes its good condition to the freezing conditions in the region for most of the year. And finally, the German lady owner of a Maharaja's hunting vehicle has decided to put it up for auction. 
In this film, the owner of the historic Rolls-Royce tells its story in German at the Concours de Elegance classic Gala Schwetzingen. The 1933-2025 horsepower Rolls-Royce with real ivory dials is tipped to sell for £200,000. It originally belonged to the Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir, Harry Singh. Listed on auction site katawiki.com, the car is open for bidding until the 25th of September 2017. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, Mr Crow gets a shotgun tune-up and to test drive a new rifle. Andy, like other members of the Corvid family, is naturally drawn to shiny stuff. Today, we're helping feed the habit. The John Carrington from Blaza Sporting is here to change the stock on the F-16, talk him through a new R8 with two barrel options, plus zero Andy's personalised aim point. Then there are some new UK shoot warehouse decoys to test. All this with the potential of some pigeon shooting and deer stalking at the end of it. That is nice. It is nice. John's come down today. He's bought me a, a few goodies. He's bought me a Blaza R8 with two barrels, a 3006 and a 243, which is quite nice. And he's also bought me a new stock for the F16. The stock I had on there before was a Sporter. It's shooting a tad high for me, sir. He's bought me the game stock down today. He's just going to stick that on and uh, then we're going to go out and play, see if we can shoot some pigeons and a few crows. Uh, in between time, we're going to play about with the uh, R8. Uh, we're going to put the aim point on that. And uh, worth a day of playing with new toys today. Andy is going to miss the exceptional wood of the original F-16 stock, but if it doesn't fit, there's no point. And the changeover makes an immediate impression. That has made a difference. And it's before I was looking I was cocked up here. That's, that stock must have a bit of a gimp in it. That's a technical term for cast on, cast off. Considering it's a new gun, it's just unbelievable. Mm. No, I like that. To break in the blazer, Andy breaks out the clays and telehandles handles the Laporte trap into the field. Hey, dude. Oh. It's an interesting target, but Crow is smiling. If he's happy, we're happy. We ask a lot of Andy, chopping and changing test guns, and it's a huge relief when everything slots into place. You wouldn't think it'd make that much difference, but it does, and I've always said it, get the gun fitted. It's like a totally different gun. It fits me really well now. Laporte have kindly uh, loaned me a trap. I haven't used it till now because I've been too busy. Oh! We have worked hard this summer. It's been a real testing year for us, weather-wise. You get one dry day, you think, oh, I'll get going to go on the combine tomorrow. You get going and then you get a shower of rain. So then you're off for two, three days and it's just been stop, start, stop, start and it's been a horrible year. It's nice to get off a tractor for a day. With the shotgun sorted, it's now time to put together the Blazer R8. Andy has been wanting one of these for years, but the modular system messes with his mind. You take the scope off, take everything off, put it back on. In my head, you've got to go out and put another two or three bullets through it to zero it in. Yeah. But you're telling me that you don't have to do that. No, it takes a little getting used to. Yeah, um, and imagine. I'd say with anybody that does it, is, is go and play with it. When you zero it in at the range, take it apart, yeah. put it back together and check it. And you'll, it takes a little bit. As I said, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Yeah. But once you're used to it, you just have faith that it does it. When you actually have different barrels, you have a different magazine insert for them. Right. Okay. So all that is, this is the stand, the trigger unit. Uh, yeah, have a magazine in case. There's a little knob on the back there on some that shows some sun. Yeah. And that's two, four, three. If you then want to change it, a little bit of pressure on the bottom, push it in, and then it pops out. 
with two calipers, you've got the 30F6 and the 243. Yep. The same bolt head does both. If at a later date you wanted to go with a 223 on it, you can just change the bolt head. Um, basically change the bolt head, there's a tiny little lever on the back there. Yep. Put the lever across and up. Yep, yep. Slight turn and the bolt head will just come straight out. Change it to the calibre that you Pacific one you're after. Yep. Pop it back in. Line the bottom foot up there. Oh yeah. Slight turn and slight little bit of lift back it on the bolt. Back. Yeah, yeah. To line the kit. Just reset it up and it it straight in. That's it. 243 and 308 tend to be more common than anything else. Scotland like the 270, but some of the Magnum calibers, 300 wind mags, um, seem to be popular. Yeah. With the 243 so, barrel on board, yeah. John clips on the aim point. So and he attended the Aimpoint Academy with Dom earlier in the year. Uh, this H2 is slightly different because it's a personalised one for Andy. As you can see, Andy's name is actually on here. So if you find it lying around, you know whose it is. John used Aimpoints at the Blaser sporting event at Braces of Bristol earlier in the summer, so that makes things a little quicker for us to get up and running. This is it. Andy is also not used to a straight pull and it's a technique all on its own. But once practiced, it's an efficient way of getting rounds down range. Right, pigeons. Tomorrow, Crow tells us what remains of this wheat crop is to be turned over for rape. The grain on the ground would have delivered a decent bag in a week or so, but no time for that. Besides, there's another crop attracting the pigeons at this time of year. There's a lot of acorns around. Look at this tree, look. It's only a tiny tree in the middle of a field. Got loads on it. It's only, boy, look at the size of it. It's only 15 foot tall. Absolutely loaded. We get all this rape in. They'll be on the acorns till mid December, and the rape will be away from them then anyway, so that's the plan. Hey, last time I was pigeon shoot was when I was about 17, and I was doing my gamekeeping, which was um, more years than I care to remember, but about 19 years ago. Whoa. Pressure's on, Crow, to live an amazing hour. Or two. Yeah, well, like I said just a minute, this field, um, they're just starting to find it. All the stubbles around, we've ripped our stubbles up, put in rape in. All the stubbles local, they've, they've pulled them up now and put either rape in or just dissed them up. So they're just starting to concentrate on the bit of corn that's left where this went flat. So we just have a couple of hours here now and till about six, seven o'clock and pack up and bob off and see if we can get a, a fallow each tonight. That'd be nice. They'll finish the day off lovely that way. Yeah, these are fresh from uh, UK shoot warehouse. This is our own decoys. Different colours, you've got the darker one, the lighter one. I prefer the one on the, on the right hand side, the lighter one of the two. You get it on drilling and, and on like stubble in it, they show off a bit better than the darker ones. So, me personally, I'll go for the lighter ones. You haven't been out since I've been using well, these, have you? Properly. The pigeons yeah. are not flooding yeah. in, but there are a few to keep us on our toes. Both John and Crow get some shooting. You want it, David? Yeah. I think we're going to cop it. Then something we have possibly never seen before. Andy in the rain. Oh, ten minutes, be stopped. As you can probably tell, he doesn't like getting his plumage wet. I think it's the first time I filmed you in the rain. I said to you about 15 minutes ago, David, it's going to rain. He said, no, 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 we're going to be all right, we'll be all right. We call it a day with 20 birds, but there's been a lot of playtime and it won't be long before the R8 is introduced to Andy's fallow problem. From wheat crops to a new crop of films, all ripe, golden and gathered in for hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Tweeds and Pheasants is invited on a grouse moor to see how a driven day works and to take photos and videos. He calls it the sport of kings, so that's another convert. Bumblefoot Films, now called the Huntsman Channel, is one of my favourites. It's his Yorkshire commentary, instructional and with a sense of humour. In his own words, if you fancy watching a fat, wheezy Yorkshireman hunting rabbits, you're in the right place, lad. A short, sharp trailer, but it tells the story. This is a duck hunt with a decorated war veteran, US Navy SEAL Chief Jake Young. 
out on the pond with the Foul Life's Chad Belding, the full episode of which will air on Outdoor Channel. Whoever thinks shotguns don't work on wild boar may change their minds after watching this film from IDC Sports. This is Texas. There is nothing subtle here. They are riding the animals down using a Polaris Ranger and this shotgun is effective with buckshot or SSGs. Coyote snipers are out in July. It is hot but their combination of calls and leers brings them in and they even get an American badger. Deer hunting seasons are opening up all over the USA. Michigan Gone Wild goes after early season elk in the north of the state with guide Alvin Sikovitz. Yacht Bureau G. Carly is after a big stag in Pomerania with an 80 year old stalker. The film shows off the quality of stags available in this area of Poland. And finally, Cap and Ball is roebuck stalking with the muzzle loader in Hungary, still the place for large numbers of deer and unusual hunting methods. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Or best of all, you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>